With Dark Phoenix, we have the final true X-Men movie from Fox. That means it's time to stop and rank all 12 movies in the Fox X-Men universe from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean and I started this channel because I was driving everyone around me crazy talking about movies way too much. If you can relate, you're probably in the right place and consider clicking that subscribe button. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of the X-Men movies. Which ones do you love? Which ones do you hate? And which ones are right there in the middle? We're going to disagree. That's the fun part. Let's just do so respectfully. One final thing before we get started. People frequently ask me where I get the t-shirts that I wear in my videos, such as this one right here. Most of them are available in my merch store. The link is down below in the description. If you like some of my shirts, check it out. There might be something there for you. With that said, let's get started. Coming in in last place is X-Men Origins Wolverine. This is a very professionally made, slick looking piece of garbage where almost every decision that they made was wrong. Wolverine's origin is kind of tricky because some of the intrigue of him as an X-Men is the mystery of his past. This movie removes all of the mystery, burns all continuity to the ground, and somehow makes Wolverine a less interesting character. Nothing is left to the imagination here as we go all the way 150 years into the past and see him as a little kid. We montage through the first 100 years of his life. We get this little love story in there. We learn where he got his jacket, but none of it actually adds to the character. The tone and humor are all over the place. There's this slapstick bit in a bathroom when he first gets his claws that's embarrassing for everyone involved. One of the reasons for that is that his claws look animated. They look like cartoon claws. And while the movie is, looks incredibly expensive, the claws look so cheap. There's a plot twist involving the girlfriend person in the third act of the film that doesn't really make any sense in light of the whole rest of the film. And then there's the abomination that is their interpretation of Deadpool. I have no idea how these ideas got greenlit and funded with $150 million, but the end result is not good. Coming in at number 11 is X-Men 3 The Last Stand. This one has the classic comic book movie problem, which is to say they put too many plot lines in one film. At the core, we've got a plot line about the mutant cure. We've got one about Magneto's brotherhood and their evil scheme. And then they also tack on the Phoenix Saga inside of it. And those first two plot lines could have made for a good movie that explored some ideas and different value sets between the X-Men and Magneto, but then they decided to shoehorn in the Phoenix Saga and it weighs down the entire movie. By putting that storyline in this film, it's not given enough time to be developed so it just feels tacked on. At the same time, because it's there, it's stealing time from our other two plot lines so they don't feel developed either. So you end up having this movie where it just feels like we're jumping from different plot lines that kind of go together, but not really. Add to that, there's a couple of deaths in this movie that are just kind of shrugged off. Cyclops' death being totally unforgivable with the way that it's treated. There's also characters like Angel thrown into the mix, played by a great actor, Ben Foster, but he's totally underutilized. He's in the movie for something like five minutes. A big part of the problem here is that Brian Singer didn't return to direct, so they brought Matthew Vaughn in to direct it, but he dropped out right before principal photography started, so they had to bring Brett Ratner in to kind of just get it done. So it doesn't have a distinct flavor to it. It doesn't have a distinct style. It doesn't have something specific it's just trying to say. It's just more X-Men stuff crammed into two hours. And it's actually surprisingly light on action until the last 45 minutes. So it's another disappointment. Kicking off our top 10 is X-Men Apocalypse. This is one of the more frustrating films on the list because it does some things really well and then totally drops the ball on the most important aspects of the film. On the positive side, the plot line about Magneto and his family is fantastic. Um, there's some wonderful acting inside of it and you see the hurt, the pain, the heartache that he is going through. Unfortunately, the rest of the movie isn't worthy of this particular subplot. I think a big part of the problem here is for the first class franchise, they decided to set each movie in a different decade and that means 
There's such a big gap between films that they have to do so much catch up on where all the characters at and come with an, come up with an excuse to bring them all back together that you don't have time to really develop an interesting villain inside of it. So they take Apocalypse, one of the great villains of the X-Men franchise, and they just turn him into this evil mutant guy that wants to kill everyone on the earth. And they're so lazy in how he's written that they just gave him the mutant power to touch a TV, say learning, and learn things. Then we get to a third act where Magneto's floating in the sky, making garbage fly over his city. And then our showdown takes place essentially inside of their minds. None of it is what you're expecting or what the franchise deserves, and it certainly doesn't live up to the character of Apocalypse. At number nine is Dark Phoenix. Their second take at the Phoenix Saga corrects a number of mistakes that The Last Stand made. It spends a lot more time on the Phoenix plotline itself, but it also makes a whole new set of mistakes. The big problem here is that a bunch of our X-Men, specifically Charles Xavier and Beast, are acting totally out of character. Charles is written to be so egotistical inside of this film that he's insufferable. Another big part of the problem here is that like Last Stand, there's simply too many plot lines. It does spend a lot of time developing the Jean Grey Professor X backstory that ties into the Phoenix saga here, but everything else just feels rushed. And these aliens might be the most generic, shape-shifting, planet-invading aliens ever put into a film. With all of that said, there's some really cool action in this movie. The third act on a train actually works pretty well. It originally was supposed to be in space, but they thought it was gonna to be too much like Captain Marvel, so they did reshoots to put it down on a train. And it turns out that's one of the best sequences in the movie. All of our different characters get some moment in the spotlight. And as I mentioned before, the movie does have some powerful moments exploring Jean Grey's backstory, but it's just so drab, it's so dark that it kind of chokes the fun out of the franchise and it doesn't pay off nearly as well as it should. Coming in at number eight is the Wolverine. This is two thirds of a very good Wolverine movie with a pretty mediocre third act. James Mangold does a great job of creating this new atmosphere and tone that takes a lot of inspiration from westerns and samurai films. The action is visceral and the emotions can actually punch pretty hard themselves as it's a film exploring the pain that Wolverine carries as someone that keeps outliving the people that he loves and his desire essentially to die. But the aesthetics kind of over shadow the story itself. The specific storyline gets pretty hokey, especially the longer you go along, it works less and less. But Hugh Jackman, of course, is great in these roles. He's always compelling to see on screen. If you're going to check this one out, be sure to check out the extended, unrated version of the film because it has actually rated our violence inside of it. And for some reason, they cut a ninja fight sequence out of the theatrical cut. Like five minutes of this ninja fight sequence are pulled out of the movie. You wanna check it out. It's in the trailers and everything. It was a very weird choice on their part. Overall, this is a good, but not great Wolverine film. Next up is Deadpool 2. This is honestly a very entertaining film that's way too crowded with plot lines and attempts at humor. It's a movie that really goes for it. Every plot line idea they had, every joke they had, it just keeps throwing all of it up at the screen, hoping that something will stick. I mean, you've got a whole plot line about Vanessa dying, you've got time travel, you've got an evil school, you've got Cable out for revenge, you've got a prison sequence, you've got the formation of X-Force, but by jumping from plot line to plot line to plot line to gag to joke to scene to cameo to meta reference, None of it gets fleshed out. It's much more of like, hey, we did that, more so than doing it right. And this is what makes the movie so frustrating for me is that there's not like a specific plot line in the movie that I don't like. And it's not that I didn't laugh throughout the movie and it's not that there aren't exciting action sequences. There's just a bit too much of all of it. The movie only had a two year turnaround from the first film to this film. And I think that's probably where the problem lies that they needed another six months to do another draft of the script that they figured out what are the things that we really want to have in here and let's do those right 
right, rather than just cramming everything in there. When you do all of that, it absolutely does entertain, but it doesn't have the impact that it could have. Number six is X-Men. This is one of the films that kicked off the modern era of comic book movies. And one of the reasons for that is it figured out how to do comic book movies in a serious way that's also fun. It can have something to say and it also delivers the action and the little one-liners. A big part of the reason that this movie works is because of the fantastic casting. Looking back, it's easy to forget that Hugh Jackman was a nobody when they cast him. They just discovered that talent and this is the film, this is the role that launched him to the A-list. But the whole cast is these phenomenal actors we're talking about, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, Halle Berry, everyone's really good inside their roles and they become the person that you think of when you think of these characters. Beyond that, Brian Singer did a great job with the world building and creating this place where you would believe that there's mutants inside of it and there's the technology, there's the sci-fi side, there's the political side to all of it. And he ties that all together really well. What's not quite as strong with this film is the specific plot line about Magneto attempting to kidnap Rogue in order to use a machine to turn politicians into mutants. Yeah, it just feels like a kind of a throwaway plot line to an episode of X-Men, the animated series, and not even a great episode. Now, it does its function of using Rogue as our perspective character to go into this world of mutants, but beyond that, they probably could have found a slightly better story to tell in this universe. With that set aside, this is a very good film and holds up pretty well considering it's nearly 20 years old in cut the path for so many films that would follow. Bringing us into the top five is Days of Future Past. Now this is a film that a lot of people go bonkers for. I'm not quite in that camp, but it is very good. Right off the bat, you can talk about things like the Quicksilver sequence and just how fun, refreshing, and clever that whole and memorable that whole sequence was. Add to that, it bridges our two franchises so you get to see James McAvoy and Patrick Stewart interact with each other as both of them Charles Xavier, which is very cool. And seeing Professor Xavier's journey throughout this film can be heart-wrenching at times as you see this hopeful character go to such a place of hopelessness and you have to see someone like Wolverine pull him out of it. And of course, I love a good time travel story and this is a time travel story, so I always have a lot of fun with this one. Honestly, this is a film that I can't quite articulate why it's not higher on my list, why it doesn't pull the emotions out of me that the top four on this list do, because it's, it does everything right. I enjoy the things that are there, it just doesn't put as much happiness and as big of a grin on my face as the movies ahead of it, so I've gotta place it at number five. Coming in at number four is X-Men First Class. When I saw the trailers for this film, I thought it looked pretty bad, and the basic premise of the film I thought was kind of terrible and was very likely going to ruin the X-Men franchise, so I begrudgingly went to go see it in the theater, and it absolutely won me over almost instantly. Right off the bat, James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender are fantastic in their roles and their chemistry together is even better. They just make these characters have so many new layers and depths to them that we didn't see in the original trilogy and understanding that relationship and seeing them as just friends is really powerful and largely because their performances are so good. Add to that, I love the 60s spy movie aesthetic that Matthew Vaughn gave to this film. The way things look, the way certain sequences play out, it's a callback to 60s James Bond films. And I thought that worked really nicely inside of this film. And I think that Kevin Bacon is the villain here. He's one of the forgotten great villains of the franchise. He's such an evil person and so menacing that you hate him and want to see him defeated by the end of the film. I think the one misstep here is that the actual first class itself is pretty underutilized. Seems pretty clear they were a lot more interested in making a movie about the friendship between Magneto and Professor X and Mystique rather than one about the actual first class itself. That one misstep aside, this is a movie that wins me over every single time I watch it and I love the relationship between our main characters here. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to share your ranking down below in the comments section. We're going to disagree and that's the fun part. Let's just be respectful about it. Also, after this video, 
video. If you've enjoyed this video, check out this playlist up above. I've done a whole bunch of comic book movie rankings and you can find some of the other ones right up there. In third place is X2 X-Men United. This is a perfect example of how you do a sequel right. It continues and builds upon all the things the first film did right with tone and the character moments, and it gives it a bigger, broader, and more developed story. Also, with a lot of the movies on this list, I've mentioned that there's too many plot lines going on and it feels overstuffed or they're underdeveloped. This movie has a lot of plot lines going on. It has a lot of characters that get subplots, but it never feels overcrowded and it feels like all of the storylines feel properly developed. This is an example of how to balance a lot of characters and plot lines properly. It kicks off with a fantastic action sequence involving Nightcrawler at the White house and it never really lets up till the end of the film. It's packed with these memorable sequences, whether you're talking about Magneto's escape, the invasion of the X mansion, or this very long extended finale. All of it is memorable. All of it is choreographed very well. This is how you do a multi-layered story with a lot of characters and keep it action packed the right way. Our runner up is Deadpool. This is one of the funniest and freshest comic book movies ever made. And part of what makes it so enjoyable is knowing the backstory that Ryan Reynolds and the creative team spent years and years and years trying to get this movie made. It was an actual passion project that they pushed and pushed and pushed until it got greenlit and they were allowed to make it on their own terms and it shows. And of course, the driving force for this film is Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. This kind of feels like one of those once in a generation castings where you can't imagine anyone else playing this character as well as he does. His personality, his strengths feed into who this character is so well that you just can't imagine anyone else doing it. The specific plot line for the movie is actually pretty thin and they use that to their advantage by telling it in a creative way out of sequence and then just fleshing each of the moments out. This is how you take a simple story, execute it with excellent and create a product that is boundlessly entertaining. But coming in in first place is Logan. Going into this film, they allowed James Mangold to tell the story that he wanted to tell with an R rating and because of it you get easily the most thematically rich film on this entire list. It's all about death, redemption, regret, and it does so in a way that's still exciting and still has all the comic book slam bang action you want while having something to say about the human experience. Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart have never been better playing these characters, which is saying a lot because they've always been excellent playing these characters. But you just see the emotion, the regret, the shame as to all, everything that's happened over the last few years, and the little moments of joy and happiness as they're just eating meals together. They portray all of it so well. Likewise, I don't know if this is a movie that you could tell if we didn't have the nearly 20 years of backstory with these characters and with these actors playing these parts. Because of that, there's so much history and backstory for us as an audience that all of it has extra punch as we go into it. This is also a movie that shows that you don't have to go bigger to be better. The stakes, the size of the story are pretty small, but they use that to tell a compelling story that actually draws out big emotions from you. In an extremely saturated comic book genre, this movie shows that audiences still want a compelling story, great characters, and amazing performances, and you can still have killer action with all of those things. This movie has it all, so it comes in at number one. If you want more videos like this one, check out that playlist right over there. If you want a killer shirt like this one, check that link down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and keep talking movies too much.